Hi and welcome to the Brabazon course here at the Belfry. This is the stunning par 5 third hole. My name is Chris Ryan and in this video we're talking all about course management, we're talking about strategy and I'm going to give you a method that you can use next time you go and play which is going to help you make some more educated decisions out on the golf course. Just before we get started in the corner screen you should have the details for my social media accounts so if you don't already please go ahead and follow me on those. So we're talking about a system which I call traffic light flags and it's really a way of looking at where that pin is located on the green and splitting it into one of three categories which is then going to enable you to make a better decision on how aggressive you are towards that flag. Now just before we talk about what the different pin positions are we just need to understand my predominant ball flight and that's going to become a little bit clearer later on in the video. So I tend to hit a little bit of a right to left ball flight so a slight draw shot and that's been my shot for really as long as I can remember. Now during practice, during play, I tend to record my practice. Uh, I'm, I'm not so much now but I used to be quite disciplined in my practice, making notes um, and all that kind of stuff and playing little skills tests. So I know what my tendencies are. If I hit a perfect shot it's normally a slight right to left shot. If it isn't a perfect shot I tend to overshape the ball. So it will start, start to the right of my target, it will curve to the left as a draw does but it tends to overshape. So I have too much right to left on that golf ball. So if I'm playing poorly, I tend to hit hooks. If I'm playing well, I tend to hit draws. I don't tend to hit that many shots which start to the right and stay to the right, which is a push shot. So I know that because of my swing shape, those three shots are the ones I'm more likely to hit, a push, a draw, or a hook. But I know that from practice and play and recording my practice, the hook shot is the one that I tend to sort of hit more often if it's not a perfect shot. That information is going to be really important as we start to look at where the pins are located. Before we do that, you need to make sure that during your practice, you're starting to get a better idea of what your predominant ball flights are, where your miss shots are, miss, miss shots are and what your sort of ratios are in terms of how often you miss that ball and that target. So, you can see on this green, on this par 5, the flag is extremely to the left of the green. Now, wherever the pin is located on the green, you're going to split it into one of three categories, traffic lights. You're going to give it a red flag, an amber flag, or a green flag. For me, this is a red flag. So, because it's on the left-hand side of the green, if I hit my golf shot and I hit a perfect shot, I'm going to be pretty close to the flag. But we've all just said that my tendency is to curve the ball too much. Now, if I curve the ball too much, I'm missing the green left. Not only am I missing the green left, but I'm short-sided myself. I don't have a lot of room to work with. So for me, that's a pretty dangerous flag. That's a red flag. Now, if the flag was in the middle of the green, and you can see there that I've just sort of demonstrated where that would be, this one is an amber flag. So here, if I aim at the flag and I hit a perfect shot, it's going to hopefully be pretty close. If I tend to shape the ball a little bit too much, there's a little bit of green to the left where I can land my ball. But if I shape the ball quite a lot and it hooks quite a bit, again, there's a risk that I could miss that green. So that is an amber flag. If this flag was positioned on the extreme right-hand side of the green, to me, that's a green flag. Because if I hit the perfect shot, I'm going to be by the flag. And if I tend to hook the ball, which is, as we said, my tendency if it's not going to be a good shot, I've actually got a lot more green for that ball to go into. So that, for me, is a, more of a green flag. So that's a little bit of an easier flag for me to attack. So you can see there how we categorise those flags into three different positions. What you're going to start to do is do this next time you play. Look at the flag, look at your tendencies and give that flag a green, an amber or a red. Now for me, a red flag is really the ones that I don't want to go for. So if this flag was extremely left of the green, as it is, I'm going to aim more out to the right. I don't really want to get sort of tempted by that flag because when I do that's when I'm going to start to make my double bogeys. I'm going to miss the green, I'm not going to get up and down, that's when I start to make my, my bigger scores. Flags on the right hand side of the screen are really quite suited to me because it allows me to be quite aggressive towards it. If I turn it a bit left it's not going to be too far away. Now if it's a red flag it does not mean that you cannot aim for it. You have to just make an educated decision. So if it's the, this is the first hole of my medal round I'm certainly not going to aim at that red flag. But if I'm on the last hole in a match play situation and I need to win the hole and one down, whatever it may be, then I might go for it. So there are situations where you may well go for red flags. We're not saying if it's a red flag you don't go for it. What we're doing is just saying that red flag is just making the decision, giving you some information about that flag. It's not quite suited to your golf game. 
Now, the other thing you can start to do, and this is maybe taking it to the next level, is to say, well, let's look at an amber flag. So an amber flag will be a flag which I'm thinking, yeah, that's OK, I might be able to go for that, but maybe I'm not going to. It's a little bit risky, et cetera, et cetera. What a lot of golfers will do then is they'll say, right, we'll give themselves a distance. So, for example, I would say 150 yards. That's my cutoff point. So once I'm inside 150 yards, I get the option of going for an amber flag. So if I've got 140 and it's an amber flag, I might think, do you know what, I'm, I need to make a birdie, I'm going to go for that. If I've got 160, to me that's outside of my range, I'm not going to go for that flag. So I start to give myself little areas to say, right, well, I'm outside of 150, I'm not going to go for that flag. When I'm inside of 150, I get the option to. It doesn't matter I'm going to, but I get the option to. So if I play a round of golf and all the flags happen to be in positions which for me are red categories, there's a very good chance I'm not going to be able to get the ball as close as if they're amber flags or if they're green flags. If the next day I go and play and all those flags happen to be green flags for me, that golf course on that day suits my eye a little bit better. I'm probably going to feel a little bit more, more comfortable on that golf course and I'm probably going to swing the club a little bit freer and I might hit some more aggressive shots. So how the course is set up is really going to dictate how aggressive you are or how you know, safe you play. We don't want to go out on the golf course and be aggressive for 18 holes. But equally, we don't want to go on the golf course and be play too safe rating holes because you're not going to put a great score together. We have to make our decisions based on what's in front of us. And that little system there is quite simple to do. And it's quite interesting when I get golfers to do this on how they categorize the flags. So, par five, third hole. Uh, I've still got about 180 yards. So I've got my five iron. Flag is tucked way left. That, to me, is a red flag. So I'm going to go sort of just right of center. Because if I hit a good shot, I'm leaving myself 20, 25 feet. If I do slightly overshape it, I'm actually going to be a little bit closer. So this is the best option for me, aiming into the middle of the green, away from the flag. And I have slightly overshaped it, and that's actually going to be pretty close. OK, so that's actually about looks about six feet right to the flag and that is absolutely a great example of why I did what I did. If I'd have aimed at that flag, that goal swing would probably have put me, well, left of the flag, would have landed on the bank, kicked into the water. I've then got to make a drop up there, replay it, whatever it may be. That brings in double bogey. What I've actually done is made a great decision, understood my ball flight. It's actually gone a little bit left of where I am. It's about six feet away and I've got a chance at making that putt. So really good example of why we'd like to do this. Categorise the flags, red, amber, green. Green flags you can go for, amber flags depends on how far away you are, red flags are the ones you've got to be careful of, look at the situation you're in, are you in match play, do you need to win the hole, is it early in the round, make your decision based on the flag, based on the club you've got and based on your personal ball flight information. Hope that helps, practical stuff that you can do next time you go and play, I certainly think if you can improve your course management you can lower your scores and the good thing with course management is it doesn't take much time to practice, it's not like a swing change. You can do it instantly next time you go and play. And as I said, I think it's going to give you some better results. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that helps. Let me know what you thought in the comments box. There's a like button down there as well. All the usual stuff. There is also a link to subscribe in the description box down below. So if you aren't a subscriber, click that. It's absolutely free. It means you'll get access to all my videos as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.